Hello, everybody. Welcome to the podcast. We've got Jimmy Crut here, the first MMA fighter I've had on. So, what a way to kick it off! I've been trying to get your mate. I've been trying to get your mate Kit Campbell in, yeah. but he's a hard man to make plans with. He's a hard man to make plans. With. <laughs> yeah. That's like sticking to a plan, does <laughs> mate? I've been texting him, and uh, we we spoke on the phone. Then we were meant to do it, and then we were meant to do it, do it again the next week. And then I called him, and then I sorry, I texted him. He didn't reply. So, Kit, if you're watching, yeah. mate. Get on it, because we were meant to do a podcast, me, you, and him. That's what he said, but like whatever. Yeah. I'll be down for that. <laughs> How are you, man? Mate, I'm good. Um, I'll just put this right in front of your face there so we can all hear. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good, man. Like, just training. Training now. I've got nothing in mind, but just back the training and keep keep getting better and, and working working towards the next goal. So, I've actually finally got goals in my life. And, yeah. yeah. What do you mean by finally got goals in your life? Is it something you've been working just goals, like just little goals, not nothing big. Like I just normally go through and wing, wing everything. Like yeah, <laughs> I just come to training and I I do the work. But now I've got set little paths I want to take and like little obstacles I want to achieve in my own mind. Is that something that you're working with others to to achieve or to sort of map out, or is that something that you've really tried to do by yourself? I've I've, I've done it by myself, but I'm gonna bring some guys in and yeah, yeah. And you just you've obviously got Sam Greco. Would he be your main mentor? Yeah, hundred percent. Sam is. I don't even call Sam a coach. He's a mentor to me. Yeah, um, he's in, a man. in life in general. So he's a great man, Sammy. He's I had him on man. the podcast a few weeks ago. I'm not sure if you saw it, but um, mate, he had me wrapped around his little finger the whole time with the stuff he was saying. <laughs> yeah, he's, the stories um, he tells, like the wisdom he's got over the years, the things he's been through. Yeah, one of the biggest things like was Sam. One of the most inspiring things about him, like you, you'll go to like a fight show and you're sitting backstage with him. And like you see it in him, he starts shadow boxing, and like he doesn't even realize anyone's looking at him, and he's he's, he's shadow boxing. And then you like look, and he's got goosebumps all just sitting backstage at any fight show. He's like got goosebumps, and like really? you just you can just tell the passion he has for the sport is unbelievable. One of my favorite stories about Sam is is when he was training you, and he had a heart attack that night when he was um, cornering me. Yeah, do you mind if yeah. that's not too hard to tell that story? Nah, that's all right. Um, because he's all right but um yeah we so it was my second title defense on hex so it was, a, it was scheduled 25 minute bout when i went the distance five rounds yeah. and um yeah sam just didn't seem himself before before he walked out but i just thought i just thought he had a sore arm because he just kept like grabbing at his arm and he was real pale and i just thought he was a bit crook yeah but um yeah he he had a heart attack before we walked out cornered me for the whole 30 minutes because of the minutes in between rounds so it was a 30 minute fight at the end of the, the end so, of so it was five five minute rounds yeah five fives because it was a title fight stayed, and his heart would have been racing with the adrenaline <laughs> stayed for the whole thing while having a heart attack and then um goes to the hospital <laughs> after the fight and um yeah it turns out he was having a fucking heart attack while i was fighting and he didn't he just stayed mate he is he is something else. Sammy. Something else, man. Mate, I'm, I'm training with um, Paul Firefield because I'm doing like a novice fight in December. But um, I'm training with Paul, Paul Firefield at the moment. And you see like the mental strength that Paul yeah. has. And then you see the mental strength that Sam has. You must be like, mate, in the best hands possible. I've, I really do feel like that, man. I've got the, I've got, I just feel like I've got the right people around me. And, um, you know, I keep my circle very, very small. I don't allow everyone in. I don't allow hardly anyone in. I've got a group of maybe four or five people that are in, on the inner circle, and that's how I like to keep it. But uh, Sammy runs that ship, and um, you know I got I got the most respect and not anyone could possibly have for someone for for that yeah. man. So, as you know, I'm a big fan of your team. We met a few weeks ago for the first time at the uh, dinner before UFC two four. Yeah. Um, I don't remember that. Three, <laughs> which, yeah, I don't remember much of it either. And then um <laughs> That was my first drunk interview. It was great. <laughs> it was awesome. It was a good night. Um and then uh, I saw you at Eternal MMA as well. Do you remember much from that night? <laughs> <laughs> you like to have a good time while you're while you're off in the I don't the normally do that, but I just send it for the whole week. Yeah. Every night. Well, mate, UFC was in <laughs> Melbourne. After, mate. After I don't get to, and I don't like inside a camp. Well, not even inside a camp, but just normal day to day. I don't, I don't, I don't get up too much. Just like mm. I chill out, I walk my dog. I, like that's my life. Where I know I just let loose for a bit. For, yeah, for I guess you have to, man, because like you're a young dude. You've got your whole career ahead of you. You're very at twenty three. Yeah, for twenty three, you're very advanced for your age. So I guess you have to be young as well and yeah. have that sort of 
Well, I never, ever since, yeah, I never, never really got to like, yeah, have a good time and stuff, but my work's important to me and, and um, I know this is much bigger than any, any other thing that I could do. So yeah, I need to put a hundred percent of my time and focus into what I love to do. Yeah, man. So that eternal MMA night, do you um, remember Jack Dalla, the co-main yeah, event? I remember you went and you went and said something to him after the fight when he was coming out. You went into him and his brother, and you said, "I think congratulated them all, or something like that." Oh, um, yeah, I like those guys. I actually, I actually trained with um, Kevin, the guy for. Well, I used to train with Kevin. On he pops in every now and then, and um, I just said, "Yeah, he's a good. That's a that's a good one over a tough guy." Yeah, um, and I just said, I just said, I just I like you, you and your brother's style. Yeah, have you seen much of them beforehand? Yeah, I've watched a little bit. Like, I don't really keep up to date with Australian MMA. Mm. When I do watch like regional MMA, um, it's normally to study for training partners who who my guys are fighting and, right. and who I have to emulate and sort of sort of stuff. So. Mm. That was a good night though. There was a fair bit of talent there. That yeah, was actually was the first time I've ever been to a regional MMA show. Mm. Yeah, it was a good night. Um, there was some there was some superstars in the in the crowd too like probably probably couldn't have had any more bigger names in there there was yeah there was man, like there henry was, cejudo yeah. sitting up um mick maynard was sitting cage side really but yeah it was it was like i didn't even see me i saw henry cejudo i managed to uh say hi to henry at one point which was awesome uh volk was up there as well volk yeah, was doing some volk common was, commentating kai was there. i'm pretty sure kai was there yeah he was there with yeah. henry uh volkanovsky was doing some commentary he's a good mate of yours as well isn't he volkanovsky oh I, I saw you like, guys knocking not, about in your suits and that. Yeah, he's a really cool guy. I, I, I honestly, Volk's Volk's one of the coolest guys I've ever met. Honestly, but like we're not, we haven't known each other for ages. Like we've met each other a few times, and yeah, yeah, awesome. So you came up on the regional scene. Um, where did you make your pro debut, and then where did you sort of go from then before you were signed to the UFC? So I have made my pro debut on Hex. Only fought for Hex until I was seven and zero, and then went to. Um, Dana White's Tuesday Night Contender Series. And I think I'm the only person regionally that is, I think I'm the only person that's gone through just one promotion and, and made it to the big show. Really? Yeah. A lot of guys do tend to hop from different promotions yeah. to promotion. What was that like then when you were 7-0 and, and then you get it? Were you expecting to get a call up to something as as sort of um, awesome as Dana White's Contender Series? Man, I was um at the time, so I was gunning for the, I was gunning for the UFC since I was like 5-0. I didn't expect to get signed. I just everyone was saying, "No, you, you, you're not experienced enough." But I was like, "I don't care. Like, I know I'm not going to get signed when I'm five and zero. But what I'm doing is I'm putting my name out there, and I just keep planting the seed, keep planting the seed. And by the time I was seven and zero, or they already knew me from when I was calling mm. from um, when I was five and zero. So like, I, I knew exactly where I wanted to go. Um, I know at the time there was like a Singapore card. Yeah. Um, and I was we got in contact with Mick which is the UFC matchmaker. We asked to be on the Singapore card and he said, no, we can't just sign people anymore. We need to put him through this. And um, you know what? Honestly, going through the contender series was far better than just getting signed to a, mm. to a, um, to a fight because now everyone, like when, when, I, when Jimmy crew gets announced for a card, people go, Oh, that's that guy from the contender series. Not, Oh, that's that guy that filled in late notice. Right. And, <laughs> Right against so and so, like no one remembers that really. Yeah, it's a it, man. The pathways that UFC have are so entertaining. Mm. Like the uh, contender series is one, and then um, the Ultimate Fighter is like, yeah, man, it's the coolest yeah, thing ever. And again. you've got yeah, I can't wait for that. But you've got mates who have done obviously. Dan Kelly was on the Australia Canada one. Jake Matthews was on the Australia Canada one. Was yeah. Dan Kelly was on the Australia Canada yeah. one, right? And then um, your one of your best mates in Ben Sassoli was on. Um, yeah, yeah. He didn't got but he got beaten by Juan Espino who won it, man. He didn't he didn't win that. He didn't win on <laughs> Contender and he didn't win his UFC debut. Man, you put that up That guy's a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> you put up the funniest fucking meme the other day when you were like uh it was like Ben Sassoli a photo of him <laughs> with like a crackhead. It was like he was like got any more of those got, no contests. Got any more no contests. <laughs> He's a piece of shit, bro. I love Ben Sassoli. That guy's my best mate, but mate. Yeah. You, you you guys post some funny shit. <laughs> How the fuck does that guy have a blue tick and I don't? <laughs> he hasn't won. Did he email for it? Don't I don't you know. Have, you I, think, I, think, I think he did some special privileges for something because I fucking can't get one. <laughs> <laughs> can't you? <yeah. laughs> and he, he, just ha he loses a fight in the UFC, no contest, and he gets a blue tick. That's bullshit. You're a piece of shit, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, let's make this fight happen. 
I'll, I'll fucking fight. No, nah, the, <laughs> mon- the money fight is you and Jordan Degoey. Oh, yeah, nah. Yeah, no, we'll do that. That's got to happen. We'll set mate. that up. That's got to happen. For those of you who don't know, who have been living under a rock, there's been some internet beef between <laughs> Jimmy Crute and Jordan Degoey. Uh, Jordy called him out on just one talks, of his photos. He just talks too much he shit. He talks too much shit. Too and then much shit. it came to a head a few weeks ago at yep. the dinner. And anyone who can jump on Instagram, you can see it on my Insta, um, the face-off between I'll, yourself I'll, and Jordy. I was just sitting there. And I was just having my dinner and I look up and I, I thought someone put a mirror in front of me. <laughs> I was like, who, who, who put a stupid mirror there? And it was right. just you out guys are like, look like you're fucking separated up there. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> Except you're way thicker. Way better looking. It's <laughs> one of the first things I noted about you. You are one of the thickest men I've ever seen in my life. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what like people always say I should go to middleweight and then I'm like, Fucking come grab my wrist, bro. Like, yeah, you don't understand. I'm a giant dwarf. Yeah, man, some serious <laughs> fucking thickness, man. But um, so what's next for you then, brother? So um, I've heard whispers that, well, normally what they do is they, they come to the region in February. So, you know, we got... um. Who comes to the region? Matchmakers? The, the, or? the UFC? Yeah. Um, That's normally what they do. It's what I've heard through the grapevine. I'm not going to go into great detail, mm. but that's... I'll be I'll be prepared, prepared to wait it out for that. I wanted Vegas in December on um, Alex Volkanovski's card. Mm. I, I know I know for a fact that he's going to win and he's going to be the second ever Australian UFC champ. So um, I would have loved to have been on that card, but you know they they just said like it's too full. Everyone's trying to get on that card. Dude, obviously. that would have been so fucking cool. But to um, be on that card. Yeah, what but, a ca- um, it's stacked. It's stacked, it's stacked like unbelievably stacked. Stacked those. But uh, no, I'll wait. I'll wait out till February. Oh. Whenever they come back, mm. I think um, I love fighting at home. It makes more sense to fight at home. You don't have to fly your team. Well, if it's in NZ, I'll have to fly some team, but it, the fights are a lot cheaper. And um, yeah, I'll, I've got some names in mind. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of opportunities for me and a lot of guys that I can fight that mm. make sense now. So your last fight was against Misha Serkinov in Canada, um, and you won your two fights before that. Would, was it a good experience going to Canada? You had a lot of the chips against you. Yeah, it's fine. Um, no excuses on my part. Going to Canada it was like it's a long flight, but everyone has to do it when they come here. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's 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 not gonna just because the flights are not gonna win a loser when I lose a fight. You know, um, it was a cool experience. I love Canada, Vancouver, um, and yeah, the people over there they, they might as well be Aussies. Like we're, we're the same. Mm. I feel yeah. I've, I've been I've been there as well, Canadians and they're, they're fucking friendly, man. So good. Um, but yeah, it was a cool experience. Um, got you know going to someone's backyard, and you know I felt like I had a massive support over there when I walked out. It was just as loud for me, so really? that was like a real what, what the hell moment. They're just so fucking friendly. There. Yeah, <laughs> just going for the guy, going for the opposition. Yeah, yeah. But um, that no, was cool. Um, and then and then like that um that's that uh that venue has the coolest green room I've ever been in. You literally really? go up and you you like up. And the stands looking down on the cage. There's food everywhere. It was the best. Is that right? So after it, you just tucked in? (laughs) Nah, man. I couldn't eat. Like I don't. I can't eat after my fights because my my adrenaline. But of course, just like you're literally looking down over the over the octagon. That's awesome. So you just had a view of the rest of the card. It was the best. Yeah, you were like uh, up. Like you weren't very low down in the card. You were higher up in the card though. I I opened up the main card. Every UFC fight I've had, I've opened up the main card. That's awesome. You've never been on an undercard. Never been on an undercard. One day you might uh, headline, mate. Oh, mate. Fight, if I, if fight I, Johnny Bones Jones for I, that championship. If I had won that one, I probably would have been a co-main next time. But Yeah. You know, so what is next? Can you can, can you give us some names of people who you think might make sense next? Oh, I'm not one for calling guys out, man. Um, I leave my call outs to the matchmakers, you know. Um, no matter who you uh, there's, there's heaps of guys, man. There's heaps of guys that I can fight. Do you want someone ranked in that top 15 or do you think that... I don't think I deserve it, to be honest. Um, I think I need to build my way back up. If they offered me a guy yeah. in the top 15, I'd say, hell yeah. Um, but I've said it a hundred times. I'll fight anyone. Mm. I don't care. Um, you know, bring who you want. I will fight them. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. So um, I'm not in this. I'm not in this to pad my record, man. I'm, I'm, I've never been, never been about that life, so... Um, yeah, bring who you want. I'll fight them. Well, no you have got a really good team behind you, and um, I think that that it's important to have that team behind you because some coaches potentially don't look out for their fighters' interests 
as well. And yeah. if you had a coach who was saying to you, yeah, just get back in there and just fight, then I maybe... Yeah, exactly. Be the best sometimes, for you. sometimes I have to be protected from myself because, you know, I've said yes to some opportunities that came up that probably wasn't the smartest thing. Um, they all fell through. But like sometimes I just need to be protected from myself. I yeah. Think. Well, I, when I had Sam on the podcast, he said to me that I said to him, what are Jimmy's biggest strengths? And he said to me, he's had, he just has unwavering courage from for the first day you walked in um, when you were traveling what, two hours from Bendigo to get to training yeah. every day? And then, yeah, that, I guess that would be something that as a fighter, you'd just be, if you're like, you know, in the position that you're in where you get offered these fights, you'd be wanting to take the best ones, but you need a team to sort of rein you in. Yeah. You've got Daniel Kelly around you as well, yeah, who's Daniel a Kelly. UFC veteran. How do you guys call him dad, don't you? Yeah, call him dad. Dad's army. <laughs> What's the story there? Uh, so, just what it so, like on, so I, I have a different view on dad's army. Yeah. <laughs> on their view, so when the group first started, there was just a lot of dads that trained. Right. There, so they called it dad's army. My view on dad, uh, dad's army is it's Dan, Daniel Kelly's army and he's the dad. So, you know, <laughs> That's the way I see it. I, I see it as <laughs> it's like Daniel runs the sessions and, and he organizes everyone to come in and um, he's just the dad to the group. So it's dad's army. Yeah. That's my view on it. But they all have different views on it. But my view is the right one. <laughs> Man, it's, it's literally nuts to think that he was fighting in the UFC just a few years ago. Yeah. Dude, he f- fucking beat Rashad Evans, man. Beat Rashad Evans, beat um, Shoeface. Yeah. I reckon Shoeface was probably the biggest win. Yeah. That was like, man. That's Rashad a, Evans that's a is, a, is, a, is a Hall of Famer as well. Yeah. Like, and I'm, I'm a huge Rashad Evans fan. So I, yeah. love, I love Rashad. love everything he did and the ultimate fighter and when he was a coach and then he was going up and starching heavyweights and moving <laughs> like... <laughs> he, was, he was a heavyweight and he... It was small for light, heavyweight, drift, middleweight, yeah. Dude, he's a serious legend. And uh, Dan Kelly's CV, any like Olympic, Olympic judo, four time, yeah, four time Olympic judo, Commonwealth Games rep for um, wrestling. Like he's been and done it all. He so. is a motherfucker, Dan <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> when Daniel Kelly says something about combat sports, you listen, yeah, because he's been there and done that, mate. What a bad man. I can't believe that CV. He's just done everything. And, I, mate, I wouldn't be surprised if he could still bloody fight in the UFC. Oh, dad. <laughs> yeah, if he, mate, he would if, he's, um, if his knees would let. Like, yeah. He's just got a lot of injuries, but he, he, he's still got that fight in him. So how does, it, how does it work then? So you, you're, you're with Sam Greco at North Melbourne Boxing predominantly, but you, fight at, you train at Resilience. Yeah, so with- what we've got at Resilience is one of the best setups I've ever seen. We have three core groups uh, f- three core sessions a week where like monday morning wednesday morning and friday afternoon where anyone that wants to come as long as you're not a cockhead you can come in get the work in and um so what we get is a lot of diff- a lot of variety we get guys that go away train elsewhere and then they come in and we do our rounds or we do our sparring or we do our grappling um so we're, we're pretty lucky well we're not lucky because you know we built it and mm. people come well Daniel built it and we all are part of that. So, you know, it's it's a really good setup. We've got um, a lot of people say it's too hard and, and we go too hard, but those people don't last long. Yeah, you got, you guys are seriously brewing some unbelievable talent over the last few years. Mm. Yourself, obviously, Jake Matthews is another guy who's now, I think he's won five out of his last six, hasn't he? Or something yeah, like well, that. since he moved to Welterweight, I thought. I don't. Has he lost since he moved to Welter? I, I, I think he's lost uh, once again. Oh, I don't know since he's moved to Welter, but he lost to um, Rocco Martin on the last yes, open yes, card. Yes, he's, he's four and one since he moved to Welter. He was winning that fight as well, and he got Mate, caught with a Jay choke. Matthews. He's people a sleep on him, but I'm telling you, he is, man, that is true, bro. People do sleep on him. He's only he's 25 or something too. Man, he when I remember he's when. Had, um, he's had like 12 fights or 13 fights. Dude, in the UFC. he's a serious guy, man. I remember when. Um, I was watching the Australia versus Canada Ultimate Fighter. He was my age, which was like 18 or 19 yeah. or something like that. And I was like, is this guy serious? He's Man, like, yeah, um, I played footy. And then, you know, when I was 16, did kickboxing for a bit of fitness and then had a profile. And I was like... <laughs> Jake, Jake and I have some big things coming up for everyone. Just uh, Yeah, keep please tell us, man. We got, um, we got we, nothing, nothing set in stone yet, but we've got a big uh, charity ride coming up that we're going to try and really promote out of and, and get some... Um, get some get some real good support out of there and then and then we want to we want to open up a podcast so hopefully we can get that started so if you need any help man let no, me, let that, me know appreciate that. i saw that jake posted on uh social media the other day that, that he had like a track yeah from, from bendigo that's and through ballarat on. and 
Yeah, so get on there, and if if you have a gym in those areas or like a little bit out, when we're gonna um we want we want to come and do a seminar. So so so, do you know where the exact route is gonna be? Nah, from? it's on um it's on Jake's Instagram. Yeah. So if there's any country town gyms, jump on Jake Matthews Instagram, check it out because if you've got a gym around there, they're doing this for charity. It's a for a good cause. Um, whatever cause you guys choose, yeah. and then uh yeah, get to have a few UFC fighters at your gym. So that'll yeah. be sweet, man. It's gonna be um, it's gonna be good, and we're gonna go try and get a lot of coverage for it. Try and make it like a, like a, a name tour sort of thing, like, like a, something that happens not regularly, but like every now and then, and, and really build it. It'd be, I awesome. think it'll be really cool. Yeah, dude. Well, as soon as you iron out the details of what you're gonna do, let us know, and we'll promote it through the podcast. We'll get Jake on the podcast as well. Sweet. We'll put it through the Fight Fit page. I'm sure everyone here will be interested to see what you guys are doing as well. Yeah, sweet. And um. Another one I wanted to talk to you about was Michelle Reeves, your dietitian. Yes. I just had her on the podcast last week. Yeah, Tell us about how she... Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Any, would, she, would she have nice things to say or is she keeping your no, ass about all the chocolate milks you're drinking? <laughs> <laughs> no, she makes me drink those. Hey, you, you know you're on a good nutritionist when they um, work out your macros to allow oaks. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, you've got to. Because I'm with her now as well. And um, the thing that I have is I have like a tub of ice cream, yeah. the Hello Top ice cream every Friday night. That's yeah, my treat. So good. New, new flavor every Friday night. So good. Man, Michelle's obviously, honestly, before I went under Michelle, I would just not, I, I don't, I can't even think about how many calories I was on now. Like it was so minimal. I was minimal. Just, like I was no not eating anywhere near enough, like. I was wondering why I was crashing and this is why I was working full time as well. So like I was just, I was like a walking zombie. Really? And then I got on the Michelle and like she just kept saying over and over again that you're not eating enough and I, you, you never believe it because you're like, ah, oh, I need to make weight. But you know, the way, the way she structured my diet now, I make weight so easily and I get to pretty much eat what I want. As a fighter for you, it would be particularly important because as I said, you're a very thick man and you'd need over 2,000 calories to just get you out of bed in the morning. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, nah, she's, she's got me on some um, some high calories now. Yeah. That's good. Like, that's why like um, my heavyweight's a, a good class for me because I get to enjoy life. I don't have to just starve myself to, to make the weight. Mm. But um, at the same time, I still have to cut a fair bit of weight to, to, get, to, to get to 93, so... You know, um, we've we've pretty much got it down pat now where... You can have a comfortable sort yeah, of weight if, cut. If I have any issues, I just ring Michelle and just explain to her what's happening and she goes, all right, this is why this is happening and um, this is what you need to do. And sure enough, I do what she says and mm. bang like that, it all comes good. So you feel like that that sort of model, it works best for you not, not doing the drastic weight cuts all the time? No, nah, man, I hate, yeah. I hate the idea of cutting weight. It's not healthy. It's so unsafe and... To me, I don't care if someone's bigger than me. <laughs> like, mm. I don't give a shit. Yeah. What are they going to do? Like, they're going to hit a little bit harder maybe. They're going to be slower. Well, you see these days, weight cutting, I think, is going out of fashion a little bit. It because was. you see a lot of guys like Jake Matthews, who he said, who are just going up that weight division higher and they're more comfortable there. They're enjoying their camps more. They're more yeah. healthy and they're fighting better. Michael Kies has done it and he's doing really well. Darren Till's about to do it, so we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Gashlam's done it, and he's shone in at um, well, middleweight. You look at like um, middleweight, not now, but like um, last time they came to Melbourne, the the two guys that were fighting for the title, were Calvin and Rob, former welterweights, they moved up from welterweight. Um, yep. Look at light heavyweight, uh, Tiago Santos moved up from middleweight. Mm. Now he's one of the baddest guys, Anthony Smith. There's guys that have moved up that haven't done well, but like. There's a lot more success rates for guys that move up rather than guys that go down. The guys that go down normally end up getting knocked out really easy. Yeah. Have you seen the one FC weight cutting model? Nah, I don't really watch it. <laughs> so they basically have like experts who will weigh um the people and do all of their body measurements and fluid tests and all mm. that sort of stuff. And then from what I understand, that's how they then formulate their whoever what, they what, what weight they're gonna fight at. Yeah, I think um in the UFC could do something like that, but it's just so hard because if, if someone was to tell me, no, you need to fight this weight and I felt comfortable, so, like, yeah, as a fighter, you're just going to go, yeah, like, yeah. You don't tell me what to do. Well, fair enough, mate. But, um, no, nah, I like, um, I like, like, heavyweight for me, like, it's just, it's such an easy card, like, mm. 
and then I, I the rehab like the the bounce back ups so easy for yeah. me too. If I was to, I could make middleweight. I could, but fuck, it would not be pleasant. Yeah, and I wouldn't enjoy it, and I wouldn't get as much out of my training. I wouldn't. By by the time the fight came around, I would. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be healthy. So yeah, what's the point in it? Well, stay there, mate. If that's what you like. Another thing I really am interested in about in you as a fighter is that your sort of psychological um, sort of journey that you've been on. I think that um, from the Dana White's Contender Series until your last fight, that you could the, vis- the, the your body language that you were displaying was kind of, had changed a lot. I feel like you'd really managed to hone in your nerves a <laughs> lot. Oh no, man, um, oh, it's such a weird thing because. I don't know, like it's so hard to explain a fighter's mindset. Um, I have to change a lot of things. And it's like people people look at my last fight and they see the way I rushed in and they, and they think, oh, he's too overconfident and, and um, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's really it, worked for you in your early if, fights though. If, if, you, if you look at it that way, yeah. But if you look at it the way that maybe I wasn't confident and that's why I jumped on him when I did, maybe, maybe, maybe that's it. And, um, you know, I've never been confident. And I've never, I've never truly believed in myself. Um, half the time out there, I'm, I'm acting confident. I'm doing interviews. I'm, I'm just winging it. <laughs> I've never truly believed in myself, and that's why now I'm trying to rewire my brain. Um, you know, if you asked me before my last fight it, if I was talented, I would say no. But like, I think about it now, and I think, well, hang on a second, maybe, I, maybe I am talented. Like, I have to tell myself that because otherwise, I get in these positions where it's the pressure's on and I just I just fucking go because I, I don't really believe that I can I can do the things that I can do, you know. Mm. So And be cool and manufacture a game plan yeah. and stick to it and So that's like been one of the biggest things for me is just starting to believe in myself and, and believe in yeah, I, I am a I am talented. I, I can I can stick it with the best of them at their own game. Um and it, yeah, that's like, um, so fighters' minds are so hard to explain because it can go either way. Like some guys can be overconfident, some guys can be underconfident. Mm. And then one guy can be underconfident one day and then the next day be overconfident. It's just such a, such a... Um, roller coaster. Really, 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 yeah, it's a roller coaster and it's such a really, really hard thing to try and control. It's, very, it's really interesting, man, to, to hear it from your perspective and such an honest perspective as well because these days it's all about bravado. You see... Yeah. Darren tell fucking no man alive could fucking <laughs> could fucking beat me, <laughs> and then you see like Conor McGregor and the bravado, and you see that people see that he makes a lot of money from doing right. that, and then that's confidence. But behind closed doors or beyond the surface, you don't really know what fighters are like. So to hear that sort of yeah. perspective from you in a very honest way I is really start, interesting. Because all man, I just look at myself as a as a kid from fucking Bendigo hmm. that. Worked really hard to get to where he is. Like I don't, I don't see myself as some fucking. Like, yeah, I, I literally just that's all it like. So like when 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 things that I've envisioned actually happen, I just I have to go. What the fuck? How is this actually happening? Like mm. when when I fought Misha and I had him hurt, I said before the fight, I said if he takes me down, I'm gonna sweep him, I'm gonna hit him, and I'm gonna take out him. I said that. And then when it was actually happening, the way I said it was going to happen, right. I was like, what the fuck? This is actually happening. And so that's why I just went harder because I was like, fuck, this is actually happening. I can't believe it. And like, so not having that confidence to actually believe that I could do it sort of backfired in me, you know? Right, right. Because that your ground game is is it, really yeah, good. It does, doesn't look like it in that fight, but I'm a legitimate black belt. Yeah, yeah. Your, your ground game is nothing to fuck with. And I was talking to Sam Greco about that as well, and you and the way that you could have locked it in when you're on the I, ground. Yeah, and, man. Like you never see me do that. Yeah. I've finished fights by mounted ground and pound before, but it's all set up. I, I I truly believe, like if I had hunted for submissions there as well, I could have submitted him. Like, I, and I'm not I'm not just saying that because I like hindsight and stuff, but like I had the ability to win that fight. But my mindset was not right mm. at all. And how do you see that in hindsight, that fight in terms of a learning experience and in terms of moving forward? It's, so I've made a lot of mistakes in pre- previous fights, but I've never fought someone that was good enough to capitalize. Where this time, 
the, the, the big dogs in the top 15, they're going to capitalize on that shit. And that's what I have to really iron out all those kinks, get my mindset right, um, not make those silly, silly little mistakes. Like, who the fuck tries to punch someone off their back? Tai Tui Vasa. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it must be an Aussie thing. I know, <laughs> yeah. I know Ben Sassoli did it too. Yeah. Ben Sassoli did it on the um, Ultimate Fighter. Piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, Ben Sassoli the other week... Um, against Greg Hardy that it was a fucking huge fight to take when I when I saw him take that fight I was a bit like whoa your first fight in the UFC um against Greg Hardy who's had a few big Thank fights and I know you're a big fan of old Greg I love Greg <laughs> <laughs> you've had a few shit. nice things to say about him <laughs> uh, yeah I wanted to bottle him at the hotel <laughs> don't like that prick <laughs> yeah well fair enough mate he's got more baggage than a could fit on a Boeing you know what honestly he was a nice guy to us and he was very respectful and I was nice back but I didn't know about the inhaler when I was nice back oh really I said good job mate you actually came with a game plan it was good to see and I heard about the, the inhaler and I was just like motherfucker <laughs> mm, because that's unheard of to so, have someone do but you oh, yeah. You watch the footage and he did ask and he did say, don't worry about it when they weren't sure. But at the end of the day, you've been in a testing pool for longer than I have. And I know that if you've got a therapeutic use exemption, it's only for out of competition. Yeah, but also you're not allowed a Gatorade on the side. You're not allowed anything. <laughs> you're allowed water. You're and, allowed water. And your That's ice. It. Yeah. Put on, but like do you like I was, you, So yeah. I was thinking just maybe like wheel in an oxygen tank next time. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. A, just big nanganator for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But um, I was I was not happy. How how do you see uh Ben moving forward? He's obviously he'd have a few fights in his contract. He he's he he fights well, but the thing, the criticism that you'd have of Ben after just looking at that fight was the one-dimensional, very one-dimensional. And Benny's not one-dimensional at training. Benny's Benny's shown in other fights too. He can <clears> hit with other things. Um, you know, I don't want to make excuses because mm. I don't make excuses myself. I don't want to make excuses for my training partners. But um, you know, he's got a lot to work on. Maybe the bright lights got to him a bit. Maybe maybe this. Maybe that. Maybe whatever. He, all all the. All that I'm concerned about and all that Benny's concerned about and all that Dan's concerned about is he's got a lot to work on and we know what he has to work on. Hmm. And and we've everyone that knows Benny knows how he used to train. He used to be very, very lazy. Now, he's training twice a day and he's training three times a day and that's that's unheard of for so him. So the penny's dropped for him. He, it's it's bossed the wall now for him. He, he, he's going hard. So, you know, the he's got this far mainly by talent. And now he's working hard, right? I honestly think Benny's going to be at the top. So, so w w when when we look at him, I mean, it's quite funny when I watch the videos of him doing his spitting, the spitting kicks and stuff, and the combat wombat, <laughs> and he's got that whole persona. I think people really love him. He's got a massive fan base in Australia as well, yeah. in particular on you know, like I'm a part of the um, MMA Australia Facebook groups and all that sort of yeah. shit, and people love him, man, as as they do. He's you. a lovable guy. What can we? What can, sorry, go for it. Oh, no, that's all right. I was going to say, what can we expect to sort of see from him in the future? Like, what can we be excited about? Oh, he's getting really good at twisters and spinning back kicks, and um, you know, he's, he's gonna he's gonna bring out he's gonna bring out a Batista bomb in his next fight. I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, stop nah, the fight. You, you can just expect to see more dimensions to his game. He's he can he can grab. He's got good judo. He's got he's got good wrestling. He's got he's got good kicks. He kicks, he kicks me in the leg and it fucking hurts yeah. more than kickboxes, you know? He can do everything. It's just tying it in. And, um, you know, the, yeah, everyone knows about the power, but he is a well-rounded guy and he does fight. He does train well-rounded. He can fight well-rounded. Mm. And the next time he comes out, you're going to see that. I yeah. really believe that. I uh, hope so, man. That'd be awesome. All right, guys. So uh, we're going to wrap it up there. Uh, I just want to say, Jim... Good luck with everything in the future, Thanks, mate. Man. We'll be absolutely collaborating. I've had you, I've had Michelle, I've had Sam. Get the whole team on. I'd love to get Dan Kelly. I'd love to get Jake Matthews, Ben Sassoli. Talk to them all. Yeah. Um, it'd be awesome, man. And we'll and that bike ride of yours for charity, we'll definitely be promoting yeah. that as well. We're looking at it. We're looking at options. And um, yeah, just keep in touch, man. Uh, thank you so much for coming on, brother. Much appreciated. Thanks, and uh, good luck with everything in the future. Thanks, man. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs>